Good morning. Today's June 8, 2020, and this is The Morning Breach with Scott Davis. Today, I want to highlight cybersecurity training. As more and more businesses are going back to work, it is critical that your employees are being trained to protect your business from the latest cyber attacks. Not only is your business's best interest to train them, Simply by having your staff complete cybersecurity training, your organization is completing requirements in many of the top compliance laws and industry requirements. For example, PCI DSS requires training in 12.6. HIPAA, it's Privacy Rule 45 CFR 164530. The GLBA Safeguard Rule 16 CFR 314.4. Massachusetts Data Security Law. It's in 201 CMR 1703. FISMA ISO 27001 and 2. NIST 853. And other states like New York and their SHIELD Act um, just are starting to require it. Now, in addition to cyber, and in, in, in addition, cyber insurance brokers are now using NIST standards in determining what your cyber risk is. And the more compliant with NIST your organization or business is, the lower your premium is likely going to be when you come to renewal. So there's really should be no reason why cybersecurity training is not already part of your organization. If it's not, it's time to deploy a solution. And it shouldn't cost you more than maybe $2.50 a month per employee. Now, some solutions will provide your team with cybersecurity training. In addition to access uh, and additional pre-built training modules, uh, which typically include things from OSHA, uh, harassment, cybersecurity, um, which makes this whole solution a grand slam for your human resources department beyond just the cybersecurity requirement. But with some solutions, you can also upload custom made training modules for your own applications and services. So no matter what solution you go with, ensure that you can pre-schedule training, automatically enroll new employees, and track the history of completion to ensure your compliance. So I have used or demoed more than a dozen solutions that are out there. So if you have any questions, please message me or comment below in the video. So before we move into the recent cyber attacks, I wanted to follow up with news um, that we talked about last week where Maze and the Lockbit uh, ransomware teams kind of joined forces to share their knowledge, experience, and ultimately the tools that they use. From the information that the Maze group stated after that, is that additional groups would be combined as well. And that's now being confirmed as the Ragnar Locker team has officially joined this new, as I'm calling it, the extortion cartel. The grouping of these different ransomware groups definitely should put the pressure on organizations to confirm their security stacks are current, your firmware is updated, and your employees are trained. So now, Let's look at some of the recent cyber attacks. We're going to begin with the shipbuilder Finn Canteri's Norwegian unit, Vard Group AS, which was recently infected with ransomware. Uh, it's so recent as there's not a lot known yet, including the scope of what was attacked or even the variant that was utilized. The Revel ransomware group has begun auctions for the data of two U.S.-based law firms, Frazier, Wheeler, and Courtney LLP, and Vieira, Megan, Marcus LLP. So keep an eye out for that as the new trend is if you don't pay the ransom, they're going to take your data and they're going to typically auction it like they are here. The cybersecurity firm KeepNet Labs maintains a historic breach database so it can notify customers of a compromise. Not a big deal. Well, in March of 2020, a third-party IT provider was performing scheduled maintenance, and to speed up the work, the engineer disabled the firewall. During that time, the entire database was indexed by Binary Edge. Uh, indexed is a similar tool that Google uses 
to create a search engine where it's indexing all the content that's on the site. Well, binary edge, same sort of thing. Even worse is the data was left open for access without a password via an unprotected port after this was done the next day. So all the information was already public on the web. So it's not a huge thing, but it's still a breach. But it also highlights the fact that here, a trusted advisor to simply save time, disabled security functionality and cause the data breach. I've seen engineers take shortcuts and do similar things in my history in working in technology, and it should never be accepted. It's critical that your IT team is aware that security has to be a primary focus and any action that reduces that security stack needs to be reviewed and approved prior to work being done. So as always, if you've learned something new by watching this, please take a few seconds. It only takes seconds, like it and share the video. If you want to see more episodes of the morning breach, please follow, connect or subscribe. Uh, and as always guys, thank you guys for watching. Uh, today was Tuesday, so I will see everybody back here on Wednesday, the June 10th. So have a good one.